26-year-old Derek Seehausen was one of life's overachievers. Athletic, smart, and a medical student, Derek was liked by everyone he met. But one night in August of 2014, Derek left his home, walked down a Los Angeles street, and vanished into the night. This is The Case Remains Podcast, Episode 7, The Disappearance of Derek Seehausen. Derek was originally from Philadelphia, but had moved to California for college. He'd originally been studying chemical engineering before switching to biological engineering and eventually deciding to take the plunge and enroll himself in medical school. He had plans to become an orthopaedic surgeon, but a medical condition affecting his foot meant that he couldn't stand for long periods of time. We'll talk more about that later. Undeterred, Derek explored his options and landed on anaesthesia, a highly renowned and challenging field that he could work around with the problems with his foot. It was August of 2014 and Derek was about to start his fourth and final year at the University of Southern California. He was doing extremely well academically and consistently performing at the top of his class. In fact, in both his U.S. medical licensing exam and his medical college admission test, he scored in the 99th percentile. I think it's safe to say that he was a pretty smart guy. On the night of Tuesday, August 5th, Derek had been hanging out with some friends, a standard occurrence for this well-liked, popular young man. At around 9pm, he headed home, telling his friends he had to get up for work early the next day. The night had passed without incident and Derek seemed like his usual happy self. But when he didn't turn up for class that week, his friends knew immediately that something must be wrong. Derek never just wouldn't turn up. Derek's family soon got in touch with the police, who didn't mess around when it came to launching an investigation. They conducted interviews, searched people's homes and took sniffer dogs over to Derek's apartment, hoping to find a clue as to where he might have gone. Within a couple of weeks, Derek's family had also hired the services of private investigator Thomas Martin. When an initial search of his home provided no clues, police looked to surveillance footage to try and paint a picture of Derek's movements after he left his friends on August 5th. But what they found only left them baffled. At 10.33, about an hour and a half after he left his friends, Derek went to Vons, a California supermarket chain, and was caught on CCTV cameras withdrawing $200 from an ATM. Those who knew him said that this was highly unusual because Derek never carried that much cash. While he was at Vons, he also bought some milk and cereal, which was later found in his home. Though some of the cereal had been eaten, the milk was left untouched and put away in the fridge. He didn't hang around long and left the store only five minutes after he arrived, returning to his home between 10.40 and 11.15. We know that he was home at 11.15 because he made some edits to his Google Docs. The edits he made were pretty unusual. He changed all of his passwords, potentially so that people would be able to access them after he left. But if there was anything of significance contained in the Google Docs, his friends and family haven't made it public. Derek didn't use the internet for anything else at that time, and it wasn't long before he headed out of his apartment again. At 11.34, Derek went to his friend's apartment nearby and dropped off some keys that the friend had loaned Derek so that he could use the apartment to study while the friend was away. Though they had arranged for Derek to drop the keys back, he was doing it earlier than scheduled. There were computers at his friend's apartment, but an examination of these revealed that Derek didn't use them while he was there. At 11.42, he was seen on camera leaving the apartment. Just over 10 minutes later, at 11.54, Derek made a payment to a friend on his phone. He was repaying a $3,000 loan that his friend had given him to help pay for his medical school tuition. Just like with him dropping off the keys, this was done earlier than planned. Derek had agreed to pay his friend back with interest, but the pair had arranged for it to be paid back after Derek graduated. The friend had no idea that Derek was paying him back early, and even sent him a text the next morning asking him why he'd sent him the money already. There was something else unusual about this. 
Derek paid the money back from his student loan, but he would have known in advance exactly how much the student loan would be. So why did he suddenly no longer need the loan his friend had given him? As it turned out, the loan repayment was the only money that Derek ever spent out of his student loan for that year. We know that Derek went home after he dropped off the keys at the apartment, as his iPhone that he used to make the payment was later found in his room. Just one minute after Derek had paid back his friend, he was seen on CCTV cameras walking west on Sunset Boulevard and crossing north to Alvarado Street. He wasn't carrying any kind of bag with him, but he was wearing different clothes from earlier that evening. When he left his friends, he was dressed in blue jeans and a blue shirt. In the footage, he's wearing a jacket, hoodie, shirt and plaid cargo shorts. According to his friends, the jacket and hoodie combination was unusual. Derek hated wearing multiple layers of clothing and very rarely even wore a jacket. Plus, it was 65 degrees that night. That's 18 degrees for us non-Americans. So hardly the type of weather for a double layer, especially if you were then just going to pair it with cargo shorts. He was also wearing distinctive trainers, which helped to identify him from the surveillance footage, a pair of almost neon blue and yellow New Balance running shoes. The very last footage of Derek was captured at 12.02, walking north on Alvarado Street. Let's talk for a moment about what was found in Derek's apartment. A photo of his desk shows his iPad, laptop, wallet, keys and his iPhone plugged into charge, along with a few other just bits of paper and stationery and the John le Carre book Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. The paper bin next to the desk was empty, although there's no way of knowing when Derek last took out his trash. Missing from the wallet were Derek's California State ID and the $200 that he'd taken out at Vaughn's. The rest of his room, while not exactly tidy, was pretty typical for a med student in his final year and showed no signs of any kind of foul play. His car was parked at his apartment, exactly where you would expect it to be. Derek had cleared the history on his computer, but forensics experts were able to recover it. It showed that he had made a Google Maps search for the Vons. This in itself seems a little odd, considering it was the closest shop to his home, and he would almost have certainly known where it was. Apart from that, there was nothing suspicious, just general Google searches, med school stuff, and Reddit. Due to the direction he was walking in that final piece of footage, some believe that he may have been going to catch a bus. There's a camera further up Alvarado Street, in the same direction that Derek was last seen heading. According to Google Maps, this is only about a seven-minute walk away. But somewhere in the seven minutes, Derek must have changed course because he was never seen on that other camera. The Vons that Derek had visited earlier that evening was in between where he was last seen on the camera and the intersection that we know Derek didn't reach. There are four different bus stops surrounding the Vons, all easily reached within just a few minutes' walk. At the time Derek was last seen, there were still buses running at three of those four stops – the number two, the 200, and the 92. So that's three potential buses, each going in two opposite directions. Of those six routes, one of them seems pretty unlikely. The 200 northbound bus goes only a couple of blocks before turning back around. Derek had a car of his own, so he wouldn't normally be one to take the bus if there was somewhere he wanted to go. Also, forensics on his computer, iPad and phone, which were all left at his house, showed no evidence of him looking up bus routes prior to his disappearance. However, we do know that he was at the Vons earlier that night and he could have looked up the schedules while he was there. Because the Metro bus security footage is wiped after three days, there is no way of knowing for sure if Derek ever got on one of these buses or if there was some other reason he could not be traced walking northbound on Alvarado Street. Some of the bus routes mentioned stop off near the ocean or are well connected to wilderness and state park areas, which is another reason why some people who knew Derek think he may have got on board. Derek was a keen outdoorsman, loved to hike and camp, and was extremely athletic. He even placed fifth in an Ironman competition, which, by the way, involves a 112-mile bike ride, a 2.4-mile swim, and a 26.2-mile run. But there is also another strange tie to the outdoors. 
In a post that has since been deleted from the website helpfinddarek.com, Derek's brother Daniel said, When Derek was 18, his father disappeared unexpectedly. This was not preempted by any sentiment outside of his father's normal attitude. His father was found, after being missing for several weeks, by relatives in the wilderness near a rest stop. It appears that our father left without warning because of unhappiness, depression or bipolar disorder. Ultimately, this happened again a few months later. What this means for the search with Derek is that he has been exposed to someone close in his family disappearing without warning. Additionally, Derek has experienced someone close to him going to the outdoors when they disappear and waiting there for extended periods of time. He goes on to emphasise Derek's extreme love of the outdoors. Sure enough, his friend spent the first couple of weeks combing the local trails, posting flyers and asking local hikers to keep their eyes peeled. But still there was no sign of Derek. A month later, on September 5th, a possible sighting was called in by none other than an L.A. police officer. He had been out on patrol looking for another man when he spotted a guy who looked remarkably like Derek on an L.A. Metro bus. Police were able to get footage of the man, which was then also handed over to the Seahausen's private investigator. Five days after that, on September 10th, another person called in a sighting of a man who looked like Derek shuffling along the Pacific Coast Highway about a two and a half hour drive from where Derek was last seen. The shuffling part is important. Remember the problem Derek had with his foot? Derek suffered from bilateral plantar fasciitis, which is basically caused by a strained ligament in the arch of your foot. It can cause pain and swelling and could definitely affect your walking if you were on foot for extended periods of time. According to friends, Derek had tried everything under the sun to try and ease the pain of the condition from changing his diet to anti-inflammatory injections. Though the condition had caused him to change his pathway into medicine, it didn't seem to have upset him too much. In fact, the very day he disappeared, he told a fellow classmate, Gabriel Waterman, about his excitement in pursuing a career in anaesthesia. When no leads had turned up five weeks after his disappearance, Derek's mother, Jean Garda, private investigator Thomas Martin and Derek's best friend, Shu Han He, gave a press conference at the USC Medical School, where Jean delivered this emotional message. He has left such a void in our family. Derek has three brothers, an older one at 28, and a 25-year-old brother, and a 14-year-old brother. And he has a sister, 16-year-old sister. The two younger children are just... They idolize Derek and they're struggling, just struggling to understand what happened and where he is. My 16-year-old daughter has had such a hard time. A couple times she's broken down at school and we've had to go get her. She's just so filled with, with grief and devastated and bewildered. And it just makes no sense to us. As Tom said, Derek was full of life. He often talked to me about the interesting things he was doing in medical school. I had a lot of interest in medicine myself, and so he would call me with interesting things, send me videos, send me links to articles. And he also loved the outdoors. He loved to hike and scuba dive and, and camp. And he said he was living the dream in California, and I knew we'd never get him back from California. He loved the outdoors here. A, a week before he disappeared, he posted to his Facebook a video of himself scuba diving through a through kelp and and he was hamming it up with a lobster and saying I'm feeling super and then we talked about he called me and asked me about Christmas because one of his friends from Colombia had invited him to go to Costa Rica with their family and wanted to know what our plans were if we were going to see my parents at Christmas and Thursday, before he disappeared on September 5th, he sent me, he emailed me with the dates for next spring's medical school graduation. So this just, none of this makes any sense to us. If Derek happens to watch this, and I hope to God, I pray to God he does, I want to say to him that we love him and we want him back. He's left such a void in our family. 
And I know that it would be very hard for him to come back, very, very difficult for him to come back. But he needs to do that, and we love him, and we want him back. So thank you again for being here and helping us. That's the thing about this case. None of it really makes sense. Ever since Derek disappeared, many have speculated that medical school had proved too much for him, that maybe the expectation was too much for him to bear. But a number of Derek's close friends don't believe that to be the case. Of course, med school was incredibly stressful, but Derek, by all accounts, handled it incredibly well. Not only that, but he'd got over the worst of it. The fourth year is known by many med students as the victory lap. Derek had talked to his friends about pursuing other options and was seriously considering a different path before taking up his residency. He had expressed an interest in being a computer engineer, which was something that he'd talked about openly. As well as the Christmas and graduation plans he had made with his mother, Derek had also made future plans with his friends. He'd spoken to Shuhan just three days before and made arrangements for that next weekend to go to a dinner party and out for a movie. He'd also potted new plants, ordered parts for a machine that he was building, and made work arrangements for rotations in September and October in hospitals in San Francisco and Atlanta. Although one thing is for sure, if Derek wanted to intentionally disappear, he was smart enough to do it without leaving a trace. As far as the investigation goes, the clues have all but dried up in the disappearance of Derek Seehausen. There have been no new tips posted on the Find Derek website since February of 2016, and no update to the Facebook page since April of 2017. No surveillance footage left to be seen, every avenue exhausted. But Derek is far from forgotten. Friends still post on his Facebook wall, sharing cherished memories and updates on their lives. They wonder if he is alive and well somewhere, maybe catching a wave in Costa Rica or sunning himself in some forgotten corner of the world. Though it's been more than four years since Derek disappeared, his mother Jean can't bring herself to cancel his phone. She likes to call it sometimes, just to hear the sound of his voice. Thank you so much for listening to episode 7 of the Case Remains podcast. You can keep in touch via Twitter and Instagram with the handle at Case Remains, or you can also visit our website www.caseremains.com where you'll find write-ups on missing persons and unsolved mysteries. Until next time, stay safe.